Good morning, Bimblers. And you join me on something I'm calling Warrington by Pram. It's a Pramble. And because it's a Pramble, I have my executive producer with me, Molly Gallimore. And we're going to make our way into Warrington Town Centre and have a look at some things. So first stop is the big Tesco's. Let's pramble. I pass by the big Tesco's and this old church behind me more or less every day on my way to work or going to Tesco's for a few bits. It's now a climbing centre but before 1995 it would have been St Anne's Church, an Anglican church. In fact I think it's still owned by the Church of England and the climbing club just rent it off them. St Anne was the patron saint of unmarried women and housewives and women in labour very apt the church was built in 1868 by a man named John Douglas I know what you're thinking don't you usually go on about that guy Edward Graham Paley doesn't he build all the churches in the north of England well John Douglas was his chief assistant he actually studied under Edward Graham Paley when he was in his partnership of Sharp and Paley and he eventually became Edward Graham Paley's chief assistant. That was up until 1855, when he struck out on his own. And he designed St Anne's Church here in Warrington. I was convinced that we'd visited one of his churches before. And when I looked it up, we sort of have. He built the church in Barmouth in Wales, which we visited in my Grand Welsh Bimble, part two. And I can remember getting footage of the church but not using it in the film because it didn't quite fit but it's possibly the most Welsh looking church you've ever seen it looks like a character from Nog in the Nog St Anne's Church was all paid for by Warrington rich lad William Beaumont he was the first mayor of Warrington when it became a borough in 1847 and he made all of his millions being a solicitor and he actually lived in a big stately home on Orford Park and it was called Orford Hall. Not only did he give Warrington St Anne's Church, but he also gave Warrington its municipal library. And it was actually the first rate-aided library in the whole of the UK. That means it was the first library that was paid from your council tax and that. And for all of his efforts, he got two schools named after him, a primary school and a high school. And he was buried in Padgate at Christ Church. And speaking of churches, we've got to go and have a look at another one. So let's pramble, shall we, Molly? Right from the break to the start. 
This is the Holy Trinity Church here in Warrington Town Centre. And the clock tower is kind of a main focal point in the skyline of Warrington. And it's built in my favourite style, the big square Georgian style. It replaced a small chapel on the site in 1758 and the clock tower was added in Victorian times. It was something called the Chapel of Ease. St Elphin's Church or Parish Church to us Warringtonians was getting a little bit crowded. As big as it is, and even though it's got the eighth tallest spire in the UK, there wasn't enough room for all the parishioners. So they built this, the Holy Trinity Church, as something called the Chapel of Ease. And it was built for all the people that lived in Warrington Town Centre. It was said to be designed by a James Gibb. He's the fellow that built Warrington Town Hall, or as it was called at the time, Bank Hall. It was home to Thomas Patton Jr. Thomas Patton Sr. owned a copper smelting works at Banquee. That's how he made all of his millions. And it's thanks to him that the River Mersey became navigable all the way from Liverpool to Manchester. In recent years they've uncovered that James Gibb would have been ill at the time that they built the Holy Trinity Church here in Warrington. So it's thought that one of his underlings designed it in his style. In the 1970s the roof was replaced. That was because it was full of wet rot, dry rot, woodworm and something called the Death Watch Beetle. And at the turn of the millennium, or the Manellium as my nan used to call it, they did up the clock tower and made it so that the clock worked. Most Warringtonians will associate the Holy Trinity Church with a man named Peter McLean or Homeless Pete. He used to sit outside the church in fact, he probably sat outside here for about 15 years. In 2022, he dies. And I think they should put a nice little statue of him sat outside the Holy Trinity Church. Not just to remind us of Homeless Pete, but to remind us of all the homeless people in the UK. In 2022, there was 271,000 people homeless in the UK. Some life lessons for you here, Molly. And so we reach Journey's End, Queen's Gardens. And one day when you're a teenager, Molly, you might visit Queen's Gardens with all your mates and hang around here on sunny days. That's what your dad did, in his Nirvana t-shirt with his long hair and his chain hanging down from his jeans. Queen's Gardens used to be a private gardens for all the rich folk that lived in Warrington Town Centre. And it was bought in 1897 to celebrate 50 years of Warrington Borough Council and also to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee that's Queen Victoria they erected a cast iron drinking fountain with Queen Victoria's face on it you know, in celebration of her Jubilee and it was donated to Warrington by a Robert Garnet he was a cabinet maker from Penketh and very wealthy you heard me say about the Holy Trinity Church clock tower being a main focal point of the Warrington skyline. Well, there used to be a big chimney just next to it that said Garnet's Cabinet Works up until 2018 when they knocked it down. There isn't a drinking fountain underneath the canopy anymore and it's difficult to see the detail on the cast iron because of all the layers of paint that have been put on it over the years. But if you did want to see one, it looks exactly how it would have looked when it was first erected. You need to go to Hoy Lake on the Wirral they have an identical drinking fountain painted in the original colours and both drinking fountains were made in the same factory McFarlane's of Glasgow to the side of Queen's Gardens you have the Par Hall that's Warrington's concert venue that's where all the bands play 
It was built in 1895 and it was designed by a Latsford lad like me, a man named William Owen. It wasn't only the Par Hall that he designed here in Warrington. He also designed the School of Art on Museum Street and St Barnabas' Church in Banquet. And he designed two of Warrington's most famous pubs, the Albion in Orford near my house and the Mulberry Tree over in Stockton Heath. The Par Hall has seen them all. The Who, the Rolling Stones, BDI, the Arctic Monkeys. The Stone Roses did their first reunion concert in the Par Hall. There's even footage on YouTube of your man here playing in there. I've played in the Par Hall four or five times. In fact, there's footage on YouTube of me playing in Queen's Gardens as well for the Warrington Music Festival. Just around the corner from Queen's Gardens is that municipal library that we have William Beaumont to thank for. And next door to that is Warrington Museum. And both of those buildings were designed and built by a John Dobson. He was from the North East and he's most famous for designing and building Newcastle Central Railway Station. Warrington Museum is actually a fantastic place to visit. Not only is it free entry, but it's not just full of Warrington history. It's full of all kinds of Victorian oddities and torture devices and stuffed animals and a mummy. An Egyptian mummy, not like your mummy, Molly. <laughs> <laughs>